Hey y'all, this is me, Nisi Lynn. This is the 9th of June. This is floss tube number 179. This is my second start because I accidentally stopped it a second ago, at, but I was just a few minutes in, so it's okay. Uh, we've had a fun week. I've got to have uh, some of the babies every day and all of the babies plus my bonus grandbaby one day, uh, Lily, was here. So they have had so much fun playing and swimming and cooking and we've made slime and we've made cloud dough and we have made frozen fruit cups. That one's edible, the first two are not. Uh, the first two are super easy though. You might have seen it in my Insta stories. Um, the girls love to make slime and that cloud dough, which the cloud dough is so, it's not gooey like the slime does. It really is like a cloud kind of, and it's just um, one part hair conditioner to two parts cornstarch. So I just bought really cheap hair conditioner, like, you know, that suave $1 hair conditioner and mixed it with the cornstarch. So I think Lily made orange and Kimi made pink and Ari made purple. And it's just real, it's like squishy. It's very strange, but it's called like moon dough or moon sand. People call it different things, but it's super easy. So we have just been doing all the things. Monday, Annie and I did get to the driver's license, uh, to the DMV to get our driver's license done. Um, I got a very nice lady um, today, that day. There was two nice ladies in there. So I don't know what was happening the last time we were in there that, um, well, I do, do, I do know part of it, because they have been under construction. And so they um, had opened up the other part and um, both of these ladies that were in there today were great, but they said some of the people were on vacation. So I don't know if last time we got the people who were on vacation or what, but um, it was very funny. And he says, you're just like your daddy. You know somebody who knows somebody everywhere we go because the lady, and I mean, y'all, we're 40 minutes, 45 minutes from home. And the lady, hi Patty, wants to hide everybody. The lady who was doing my driver's license, I was in school with her cousins and had been in Spanish class for three years with um, her cousin. So um, that she's like, you're just like your daddy. Before we go, you know somebody. I'm like, well, kinda. <laughs> so it was a nice time we got them done. Um, Annie, Betty did have to run something to us because Annie didn't have everything she needed because we had both misunderstood the paperwork thing. I, I brought everything because I'm in such a state of paranoia about not getting it done because Annie's wasn't out. Mine was out, y'all. Mine went out on my birthday. So I was in panic. So I had everything with me. I had my old driver's license. I had my passport. I had my birth certificate. I had a bill with my name on it. I had my library card. I had <laughs> anything. I like, look, if, if I cannot get this done today, it can't get done, right? But um, Annie did not bring her birth certificate. And this is something I still don't ever understand because you, I have my old license and Annie's wasn't expired. The way I read it and Annie read it, if it was expired, you needed all these things. But I thought if it wasn't expired that your driver's license, because it is a state issued thing. I mean, obviously you can look and see, say hi, Patty, that you know you gave me this, right? But it was not enough. If she had lived, been born in Texas, they could have looked it up on the. She could have looked it up on the system, but because Annie was born in Arkansas, she couldn't look it up. So I was teasing Annie. I said, you know, Annie, I tell people all the time, if you're lucky enough to be born in Texas, you're lucky enough. And I said, see, there's my proof right there. So Betty had to um, run, my daddy had to run her birth certificate copy to us. But by the time it was time for her appointment, because mine was at 11 and hers was at 12, it had got there and it was all good. So we managed to get some stuff accomplished this week and it was a pleasant experience. So we will go on into my whips. I have got some stitching done. Um, I think all but two days this week, I got something done. 
every day but two days. The one, um, there's two that I'm super excited about, but this one here, I got all the over one done on my Noah. And why I don't have it out of the plastic, I don't know. But this is Stories to Live By, by Plum Street Samplers, and this is the Noah. And it has a little, um, I think it's in Genesis 6, maybe. I thought it was 4, but now I'm thinking about it. I think it's 6, where it says um, that he was told, Noah was told to build the ark out of gopher wood. And so it says, Noah, oh Noah, he was very good, did as he was told, and used gopher wood. But I finished all those little over one animals there. So I only have the over one, there's a little dove and a rainbow left is all the over one, but it's a couple of rows down. So I had finished this up here and I had part of my over one animals left to do. So you, my little flamingos, those are over one. The elephant and the male lion is not over one. The head of the female lion is over one. Those two little birds, the red birds there are over one. And then I think the rest of that row is not, the, the rest is over two. But the little ladybugs, I just realized I haven't done these flowers up here. I should have done them when I had the bird, when I had that red out, but, so I've got to put little flowers in there. But I had done, I hadn't done these little birds. I hadn't done her head. And I needed to put the eyes in here and in here. And so I am super, super happy about getting it done. I think I'm just going to write Genesis 6 whatever. I think this is what I'm going to put here because I'm not going to put um, Hetty Pritchett. This is my Sunday school lesson. I'm just going to put the, I think I put Genesis here and then I'm going to start on the alphabets and then the scene at the bottom. So I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> oh, excuse me, y'all. I don't know what's in the air, but it's been getting me this week. So I'm just going to put my Genesis right here, then do my alphabets, and then start on my little scene. And I will probably do my alphabets with the red so that it will tie in with all my other alphabets. So loving it, loving it, loving it. It is so fun to stitch. Um, I'm using mainly the Call for DMCs. It is on a piece of 32 count country mocha from Floss and Pat Fabric. Hello, Geraldine. Um, I am just, I have had more fun with this thing. Uh, the over one does take some focus. So um, it's one of those things that I try to kind of pay attention to. So I don't have to, um, because the only thing worse than frogging over two is frogging over one. So, but that's where I'm at with it and I, Thinking, love it. It is the cutest thing. So I cannot wait to get it, um, more of it done. I have been struggling with wanting to start something else to keep from working on the two other things that I have to focus on. My hedgerow house sampler I need to focus when I work on it. And um, my cardinals, heaven is near. Um, I have to focus when I work on those. And so I haven't been wanting to focus or my brain doesn't want to focus or something. So I have been fighting off another start. And one night I even had it in my hand. Oh, it was that bad. I had it in my hand. And I talked myself down off the ledge. Okay, this is my little tiny, tiny Permit of Copenhagen. 14-1123. It is so cute and so tiny. And I did get some decent work done on it this week. It's a little kit. Um, let's see, it came from House of Stitches. So, um, 
I don't know if they would still have any or not, but it's the Perman Kit House 141123. And it comes with all the little threads. And then I'll show you this little piece of the thing because you can just see the very little corner. So it's marked like this. And so it is, it's easy to read. And so then I take and make, this is how I do when I get a kit. It has one of these little papers on it. And if it doesn't, I just make myself a little paper like this because it's too hard. To me, it's too hard to keep up with the threads any other way that works best for me. Um, if you have a way that works good for you, go dog go. Use it, use it, use it. But that is what I found works easiest for me. I'm gonna put these guys side by side so you can kind of see how they go. And so I start, I work some more down at the bottom and I think here down and across the bottom, I know I worked some, I maybe put this stuff up in the sky too. So I've got more than I'm thinking on here. I'll put another little clip on here to help. Okay, so you can see I did the little uh, grass down at the bottom and the little, uh, it's like the little piers or gates. I don't know if it's supposed to be a fence. I guess it's supposed to be a fence. I was thinking it was an old pier that had broken up, but it has some lines in there. So I guess it's uh, like some kind of a fence on there. So I've got it done at the bottom and the grass under it, and then started adding this color up here and these little things. So I've got some decent progress on it this week. It is so cute. I love this, but you can see it's, there's the number right there, 14-1123, and there's the name of it. And I say Permit of Copenhagen because that's what, that's how we say the snuff. You know, there's snuff that's Copenhagen. There's like Copenhagen and Skoll, and then there's those weird off brands like Kodiak and all that kind of mess, but um, Copenhagen. I think they say Copenhagen though, but, but I love this. Patty, I washed your bowls and filled them already this morning. Stop. She's out there moving those bowls around again. I already washed them this morning and I already refilled them. So she's just showing out is what she's doing. You're gonna get a spanking. I think I could catch her spanker if I wanted to. But it makes me feel better to get onto her. Like she listens. Makes me feel like she listens. So I love that thing. It has been super fun to kind of work on it and uh, see how I'm progressing. That's, um, I feel like I'm leaving somebody out though. Oh, I didn't get my Halloween rules. No, it's here. I've got it. How do I feel like I'm missing somebody? I guess I'm not. I guess I'm not missing somebody. Um, This, we'll go to Halloween rules next because here it is. I thought I'd missed it. And I was like, oh no, I thought I got everybody. I do try to keep my life together, but sometimes my life don't cooperate. Y'all have that life? I have that life. Okay, this is my Halloween rules and um, Holly had asked. It is, to me, this was difficult figuring out, trying to look at the picture and look on here and figure out how many spaces to put in between when you do them as a whole. Because, let's see, I'll show this a little more if I fold this. Nope, that's too much. 
Let's see what I can hold over here. Because see, it looks like this. So it's hard to tell when you're doing them as one because it shows you how to do them if you want to put them all separate, like if you're doing little ornaments or something. So I had the hardest time with that. And I still, this may not be right, but I put, on one of them I put two, no, I've got one. So one, so in between each, in between each, like in between wear a costume and eat candy, I have one row from the farthest. So there's one empty row in between each section. So let me put this on the board so we can see it a little easier. I'm gonna have to get a longer board or something. I have to fill this up. Uh oh, we have filled this up. Egg. We keep it getting rain here. I don't know if any of y'all saw my story where it just, every night we have got rain. And it's so funny because no further than Micah lives for me, it's probably a mile, mile and a half as the crow flies. Um, she got like 0.3. Keely's furthest place for me here is probably two miles. He got like 0.3 something. And we've had over an inch, like every time. So we have got tons of good rain um, here. We've had good rain all over. But Annie and I were talking about on Monday on our way to get our driver's license done, how tall the corn is. I mean, it's crazy how tall it is. And I said, Annie, have you ever seen it like this? And she said, well, yeah, which I wasn't thinking because in Arkansas, um, y'all live in Arkansas and probably other places do it too. They irrigate their corn. We don't hear. We, um, it just gets what it gets and it makes or it don't. We don't have irrigation systems for the most part on farms around here. But I mean, it's like six feet tall. It's crazy. It's nuts. So we have had some good rain and it has been so nice, but it has like super stormed and just blown in and it's blown things over and blown things out of the trees and I mean, it's just crazy and, and like it hits like this. It's been so strange, but okay. This is my Halloween rules and I finished a carve a pumpkin and I started the surround for stay up late. Let me see if I can get this to hold this here. Let's put you back, y'all, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get this where we can look at everything at one time. Okay. So between each one of these, I have put one row. I do not know if this is correct, but see, this one looks like there's more here, but that leaf goes up higher. So there's one row there. So I have put one row in between each one of mine. And from looking at it, that's kind of what I'm seeing, but I may not be right. But from what I can tell, and I don't think it says where I printed this off. Cause like I said, the header is a free download. And let me see here. At the top and the bottom board at the top position each sound noise. One to sound already have out. Sound noise. In box position box three. See, from what I can tell, it says it's supposed to be 366 inches high. So I guess if you wanted to do the math, you could and count it down. I, however, when I'm looking at this, I feel like there is one row between. I couldn't find where it says anywhere, but this is the one that I printed, the free download that has this at the top. So this is free if you wanna stitch this top. Of course, you could just stitch them all and not do the header either. But the way it looked to me, there is one empty row 
in between each section. So I could not find where it specifically said that, but when I look at the pattern, that's what I'm seeing here, is one empty row in between each section, each graph, right? So there's two graphs per chart. So like this one has carve a pumpkin and stay up late. So there's two graphs in each chart and or two designs in each chart. And it looks like to me there is, and from looking at this, there's one empty space in between each section. So Holly, I hope that helps. I have struggled with it and looked at it and looked at it and read, I tried, read it several times, but when I look at it, that's what I feel like it says. I'm using the call for DMCs, except with the exception so far of um, my white here is the DMC F-L-O-C-H-E, Floche? I don't know, F-L-O-C-H-E. It's, it's DMC white and it's like a long strand cotton, so it's a lot fluffier. Um, my haunted house here is DMC 4020. My leaves on these leaves weren't showing up with the number it called for, so I used 3013. And then these little leaves here are moss, De Weeks Dye Works moss. So other than that, this is all the called for DMCs. So far, those are what, four, my four exceptions. Yeah, are my four exceptions. So any white I'm using is the DMC Floche. And then um, those are the other exceptions that I've made. I love stitching on this. Um, I got my little other border nearly done here. So then when I want to do stay up late, I will have my whole little surround done and I can just work within that tiny little surround. So it's here at the bottom. So that's what I'll work on this week is that little section there. And I think that may make me halfway. Yes. So at stay up late, I will have finished half of them. So I will be right on target to be done and framed by Halloween, which um, that makes me super happy because I am so excited to have this framed and up and where you can see it because it is so dang cute. So, and here again, guys, fold your needlework in on itself so that you cover up the most of it you can. It's not going to get caught and pulled as much if something were to happen. Of course, you should keep it in some kind of a bag of some sort. Um, even if you don't do project bags, just some sort of a Ziploc bag or something. So, um, that's why I'm from Julie. Hi, Julie. Um, oh, dang, I left this out. I love it. Okay, so that is Halloween rules. Now, I have, the last one I worked on is my Pink Sparrow. Hey, Daylene. This is, a, it was sent to me from Daylene, who is so grateful. If y'all don't watch Daylene, you're missing out. She is always super cheery and super happy, and she is a woman of infinite wisdom. So, um, if you don't watch Daylene, you're missing out on your life, I'm going to tell you right now. But she sent me this, and I have loved it. It is the Pink Sparrow Sampler, Pink Sparrow Sampler, and it's by With I Needle and Thread. And it is beautiful 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 like I said I think I must I may stitch this one for good old girl who is my mama CJ changed her name to good old girl I've told y'all that before and um, if it wasn't so presumptuous I would have loved to have that for my grandma name but he called her good old girl and it just stuck. Uh, 
but he was the first grandbaby, so you know, he named everything and everybody. Um, we still call a knife around here a cut, because he would always be asking for a cut. Baby, you can't have a cut, but he always wanted him a cut. And so now, whenever James Williams and I go to the Mexican food place we go to, for some reason, I do not know why, but 90% and maybe not that, maybe 70%, you know, cause they bring your silverware rolled up, right? So it's rolled up in your napkin. And like, like you hardly ever get a knife. So we call it cut bingo. So, you know, if we sit down and open up our silverware and uh, unfold the napkin and our silverware is in there. And if there's a, if there's a cut in there, we're like, oh, you won the cut bingo because for some reason, they ain't giving you a cut at the cantina very often. I don't know why. So if you want to put butter on your tortilla, you got to ask for a cut most of the time because you ain't getting one otherwise most of the time. Okay. I told y'all I wanted to, I was hoping to get this section here done. I am so happy and I love it. I love these colors. These are all my Wicked Stepmother colors. Hey Frankie, hey Rhonda. That I just pulled and picked for this. And I was thinking love it. And this one right here. Ta-da! This one makes me think of peaches and blackberries and I am loving it. So there's a little strawberry. Turn it where the light hits it just right. There you go. There's a little strawberry. There's a little heart. You have this stack of, I'm gonna call it a peaches. There is a flower and then this quilting star here. And then you have the same thing over here on this side. So this week I will hope to get, if I was smart, I'd probably do my alphabet and then come back to this. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, I would. If I was smart, I'd probably do my alphabet and break it up a little bit, but I'm probably not smart. Um, I'm probably just going to go on with the with this next section over here, but it's just a mirror of this one. So it'll have the quilting star and the heart, and then my stack of peaches here, and then the strawberry, and then that little flower right there. But it is gorgeous. This design is so dang pretty and I just love stitching on it. The chart is easy to read. Um, and like I said, I, I decided what colors I wanted to change it to. And then this is how I do, when I do that, when I think ahead of time, instead of just pulling things on the fly. So here are the called fours. And then I just put what I decided on out here to the side. So these are all my Wicked Stepmothers. And I love them. I am loving working on this. It is so beautiful and so fun. And like I said, if I was smart, I'd probably start on my alphabet next week instead of doing the other side and break it up. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. But this is Pink Sparrow Sampler uh, with Anil and Thread with all my Wicked Stepmother floss colors. So. And I am love, love, loving it. It is so beautiful. So that one has been super fun to work on. What I've been, and then I'll show y'all what I nearly cheated with. Um, because I really want to work on this one and I may just go and let myself do it and not try to make myself discipline. I finished so many of my, I wanted to get them all done by July. I'm probably not, it's probably not going to happen because I had, last July I did my whip parade, July 2022, and I had 19 total left to do. And I still have one, two, three. 
I have five. I have five out of 19 left that I'm still working on. And I really was hoping that I would have them all finished. It's, I mean, there's no way, but I was hoping I could get rid of a few because one of them is my Halloween rules. That's a huge one. Um, Wild Hedgerow House is huge. Um, Signs from Heaven is very dense. There's so much stitching on it. So um, the Mill Hill Santa, the Merry Christmas Santa, I just need to put the beads on. But like I'm gonna have to sit down and have the beads where they can't get knocked over. And so it still hasn't, but I mean, that's all that's left. But it's just gonna require me sitting down and putting the beads and you know, in my little beading tray y'all sent me and getting busy with it. But when I'm just working on stuff or just in the evening, I don't trust myself. And in the day I've had all the kids and had having fun with them. And so it's just sitting there, but it's, it's, I mean, it's nearly done. It just needs beads. Um, my Noah, it should, it may be finished by July. So then that would put me down to having one, two, three left. Wild Hedgerow House, Signs from Heaven, and Halloween Rules. So that's not bad. Um, five left out of 19 is not bad, but I was hoping to have more done than that. But, but what has been, and like I said, you'll see I even opened it. But I decided I was sleepy and just to go and sleep. It's my this. And I picked this up when I was at the Tin Smith's Wife down in Comfort. It's Let Freedom Begin by Shepherd's Bush. And it's a full kit. And it's so little. There is just not a lot of stitch in there. And of course, summer, I display my Patriotic stuff. I'm not going to tell you what the stitch count is on this thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Finishing, embellishment, backstitch, fill in, colors, directions. Mm -mm. It ain't big, okay? But I don't see a stitch count on here. There probably is, and I probably just can't see it. But it's not big. It's very small. So this week, I may just let myself stitch that up real quick because, so that is, let Freedom Bloom by Shepherd's Bush. But I may just let myself stitch it up really quick because the main thing I'm going to try to get done this week on top of making sure everybody gets some attention on their stitching, on my stitching here, um, is I'm gonna have to have a FFO -A Palooza. I mean, it's gonna have to happen because I finished up a few things last year and I did not get them throughout the year. And I haven't got them FFO'd. So this is Earth's Delight by Shepherd's Bush. I will probably turn it into a little pin key, little pin pillow, even though I would love to put it in a tiny little frame because it is so cute. So I have this one to do. This is Earth's Delight by Shepherd's Bush. I think I use call for stuff, except for I put the little fuzzy Whisper Gallery floss on my sheep. I don't know if you can see that they're fuzzy. Maybe that way, yeah. You see they've got fuzzy stuff on them. But it is so cute. It's called Earth's Delight by Shepherd's Bush, and I love it. But it has a little flag, so I need to get it done. So that one needs to get FFO'd. I have here where Liberty dwells, and it is a housewife, you know, roll, housewife, housewife, whatever you say. But it is finished, and it won't quite stay on here. You won't get to see all of it, possibly. It's a little bit too long, but I was smart. 
I could turn it diagonally. Sometimes my brain still fires, y'all. Not often, let's be honest. Not often. We went to see Mimi on Friday, my mama, and the girls read to her and we had lunch with her and everything last Friday. Um, I don't know if we'll make it over there this afternoon or not, but we had a really nice lunch with her and a really nice visit. She loved the girls reading to her that she enjoyed that so much. So this is where Liberty dwells. It is by Heartstring Samplery, Beth Twist. This is beautiful. And it's supposed to be like a hoose wife, like a needle roll thing. I love it. And I'm telling y'all, I really am kind of thinking about just turning it into a drum or something because I, I hate the thought of it rolled up and not being able to see all of it. I mean, I guess I could just flap in these ends, but then that's really not a needle roll, right? I could put it on a spool, but here again, you're not gonna really see the whole design right. So I don't know. That's probably why it hasn't got finished yet. But look, I did this one in 2021, not even 2022. It's been languishing for a year. And I hate when I do that. And I know some of y'all just stitch for like relaxation and you don't care about FFOing things. And that's fine too, if that's what you do. Um, like I said, one of the girls Michael went to school with over at May Pearl, she just, she just gets a big piece of fabric and she just keeps on making designs on it. I mean, she just keeps on putting this up. It just adds it to it because she just stitches to stitch. She doesn't care anything about framing it or finishing it or anything like that but I need to get this done because it's not even being visible. And I feel weird about mine. If I finish them and I don't um, FFO them, I feel like I've got my kids in the closet, which is another proof that I'm insane. But I don't know why, but that's how I feel I'm doing. I feel I'm not doing them justice because I don't just stitch to stitch. I don't wanna see them. And then last year I finished my, um, house trio. I think this one's called Patriotic House Trio. No, this is my Patriotic Barn Trio. I have my Patriotic House Trio somewhere over there. That's my Patriotic House Trio right there. This is the Patriotic Barn Trio. And so I have to get it finished, FFO'd, because there it sits. I didn't, I don't think I quite got it finished last time. Here again, um, I don't know, I probably changed up colors on this thing all over the place. I did make my little sheep fuzzy, which I love, but this is by Waxing Moon Designs. It's Patriotic Barn Trio. I did mine all in one to turn them into a drum like this one. And I love it. And y'all know I wanna live in a barn, so red barn. So that one needs to be up so I have that. And then I have one more big one that I need to FFO. I finished my language of liberty a while back. So this is the language of liberty. Um, it's from a banner year by Hands On Designs. And I have got to get it FFO'd. And so here is this one. Liberta. Here is Liberty. Liberty. Beautiful. Be they are all the designs are so beautiful. And Liberté. Which has a little girl waving the banners and it is gorgeous. So I have all these that I have got to get FFO'd. So I'm hoping to work on that this weekend, um, especially because I will have James Williams here to help me cut the, these have um, like foam car board that you have to cover. And he is much better at cutting the foam car board straight than I am. For me, cutting the foam car board straight is a bit of a push. 
So, because it's hard to cut and hold at the same time for me. So hopefully I can get him to um, help me do that this weekend. We'll have to go by and check on his mama because she had an allergic reaction to something we're not sure what. We think possibly toothpaste and her lips and mouth and tongue all swelled up. So, I'll go check on her this weekend. Daddy had his treatment and his scans this week. Thank you for all your prayers. His scans were good and they gave him his treatment. Um, they had a hard time getting IV started. He was a little dehydrated, but he's gonna have to drink more water this week. Um, Okay, and I've got some happy mail and we've got questions and comments and like this, so let's see here. Um, Heidi, um, her dad was a master plumber and he said that standing on the toilet was a no-no. And Karen said that standing on the toilet was a no-no too, so um, I'm gonna try to do better. And okay, Charles was talking about the hackberry tree and what fun things he could make at the hackberry. They, the outside doesn't tend to stay very sound it'll start and it'll have like a bad place in it also. Sometimes when you cut them, you get that all the way around, but it made me remember when I was a kid and I'm gonna have to call my Uncle Wayne and ask him what kind. I would have asked my Uncle Al because he used to always make them for us. But one of the trees around here in the springtime, you cut a little piece off of a new limb and it's hollow on the inside. And so then he would drill little holes in it and it would be hollow and we it made a little flute and we could play that little flute and we just love that. So, um, you know, all those memes going around about in reels talking about, you know, uh, we were the last feral generation and that's the truth. Y'all remember that commercial on our TVs that the government had to put a commercial out to remind our parents they had children and they should check on us. Remember it would come on the TV at 10 o'clock every night and it'd say it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? Y'all remember that? So we did, we ran the woods all summer and we ate pickle sweet, which is a kind of a weed and that tastes kind of like a sweet pickle and honeysuckle. And we played these little flutes and we gathered up locust shells. Um, we call them locusts here, but it's a cicada is what it is. But we would gather their shells up and make, you know, we'd have little, Herds, it would be like their cows and have little herds of them, see how many we could get and stuff. Um, we play those little flutes. We drank out of the stream. We, we didn't drink out of the pond because it wasn't moving. Somehow we knew that you shouldn't drink still water. Uh, thank you, Jesus, for some small mercies. But we would lay down and drink out of the stream and ride our horses down to the little store. And um, it was several miles to the little store. And, you know, we'd ride down there and buy RC and, you know, everybody knew how much money we had. And so, you know, you'd figure out, and James Williams still remembers, gum was a penny. Each piece of gum was a penny. But if you bought, if you bought five, you could cheat the tax somehow. Or if you bought a certain amount, there was a certain way to cheat the tax. And I can't remember, but James Williams still can because numbers he never forgets. He can tell you how much we paid for a piece of pie in 1994. Why? I don't know, but I know the words to every song. And James Williams knows what we paid for, you know, a piece of pie in 1994 when we were driving through Lampazes. I don't know. But, I mean, yes, we were the last feral generation, and that's why we are hard to kill because... Nature been trying to kill us since the day we were born. Our parents kicked us out the house and told you get a drink out the water hose and don't come back in here and you don't let my AC out the door and don't let all the cold air out the refrigerator and all these things, all these things. So yes, we are hard to kill, but I will have to get the name of that tree, Charles, because you would love that. But in the springtime, you can drill it out because it's not filled in. The little branch is hollow on the inside and he would use his pocket knife and drill little holes in there and we would all have our little flutes. And y'all, I'm sure they sounded like, I bet we made beautiful music. Um, Nicole her, said her husband is 6'7", and I cannot imagine. James Williams is 6'4", and I feel like I am like, like he's a beast. 
Like he fills up all spaces all the time. I had a little Toyota Tacoma truck one time and we would laugh when he would drive it because he looked like McGill Gorilla in there. Cause you know, like here is, okay, if this is the truck, right? And so you have like the middle section right here, right? And his shoulders would be all the way over here. It was the funniest thing. We'd be like, he was McGilly Gorilla in the truck. So I can't imagine if your husband is 6'7", living that life. Okay, Josie, um, we were very lucky during COVID that we did not, um, because of Keely, I had access to fresh meat all the time. And um, we didn't have problems getting fresh vegetables either. So uh, we were very lucky. Uh, even what Keely didn't have, there was a butcher shop that he knew that still had meat and he would go pick up beef for us or pork or whatever. So um, she said they were stuck in the house and fresh meat was getting hard to find and she cooked tuna burgers in the house. Now I love me some tuna fish, do not get me wrong, but I am not liking having fish cooked in my house and I can't open the door. Fish gotta be cooked outside 90% of the time. I will cook salmon in my oven and stuff, but I have to open up the windows and stuff afterward because I can't stand that smell in the house. So I bet them tuna burgers in the house, I bet that was a lot. And Daylene, yes, I have enough hair for several people. It's real fine, but it's, I, there's bukus of it. Um, but enjoy your easy hair fix. She said she has a little and that somebody else y'all said you had a little, like a little, it looks like a little faux, like a fall, but it's a rubber band. And so you pull your hair up and you put it around there and it makes a little extra curly things to hold up your bun. But um, all this does what it wants at all times. It don't care what I want, as you can see, because this side here is doing this and this side here is not. I don't know why it does what it wants, but it's just got a little twist in it. I'll probably slam a hat on um, I have a little fedora that I put on. So if we go for a walk or anything, I'll probably slam that fedora on and this will still be fine over that. Um, oh, no, Allie, I didn't say I put lemon juice in her water. I don't know, I might think about it to keep her from moving it around, but no, I didn't put lemon juice. I don't put lemon juice in Patty's water. Um, I, some people I know put ice in there and one of y'all mentioned that you put ice in your cat's water. But uh, Teresa CJ is in St. Petersburg now. And Micah and them will be in Laurel Hills, which if you go between Andalusia, Alabama and Destin, Florida, they're in between there. It's kind of like right there. It's over in the panhandle. So um, they did get an offer, a uh, cash offer on the house. They countered last night. And so we'll see how that goes. Um, Teresa also said that there, there's a new floss tuber called the Dutch Stitcher. And she had... She showed a new Shannon Christine design that was a freebie that had a, a hedgehog in it. And y'all know Aria loves her hedgehog. And I didn't, I don't have it because I sent it back. Craftways always sends me those little books in the mail. Not little books, they're, you know, good size books. And they're the ones that make the calendar and everything. I've kept the calendar. This time there was nothing in the book I wanted to stitch, but Sometimes when I feel like I don't even want to think about it, I just write, you know, return to sender and they send it back. But if you open it, I took it back to the post office and it's like $4 to send it back. So just know if you open it, you cannot return it on their nickel. If you open it and you have to pay postage to send it back. So that's fine but it had a little freebie in there that you could keep whether you wanted the book or not. And I swear these all look like um, Barbara Anna designs. These are adorable. So it was my free gift for looking at it, but there was really nothing in there that tripped my trigger. So I just sent it on back. Happy mail this week. Um, so we're still doing pretty good. Teresa sent me this sweet, sweet card. Cultivate contentment. And I have to work on that all the time right now, especially. And it's like in a little golden book. Do y'all remember the, the little golden books? So this card is adorable. 
I love that. So thank you, Teresa. And then she sent me these beautiful soaps. And she said they are goat milk. I want to be sure I said, said the right thing. And she always makes all kinds of things and packages everything so adorably. Look at that. It's little goat milk soap on a little piece of paper and it's got a little tool around it and a little ribbon. It is so cute. So thank you so much, Teresa. It made my day to see that and open it up. And um, and yes, I am still crying some every day. It's ridiculous. Um, my kids are healthy and happy. And so it's just out of selfishness. But you know what? I'm gonna tell you why I ain't feeling so bad about it. This week I was feeling bad about it. I was like, you're just being selfish hag and crying and um, and I haven't cried in front of the girls, even though I do have to like go and stop. Like now, when I'm reading to them, or we're doing something together. But I read something this week and it did make me feel better. It made me feel like not such a selfish hag. Because it said, it made me feel like it was okay to weep. Because it said, Jesus wept. Jesus, when he, when they came and told him Lazarus was dead, he cried. Even though he knew that Lazarus would not that he was going to bring him back, okay, right? He knew, he knew that it was gonna be okay. And he cried. He knew this, he knew that he would bring him back and he would get to see him. He knew that he would be together with him in heaven, but he still cried. So I'm trying to give myself some grace and tell myself it's okay. Because surely Jesus cried and he knew everything was going to be okay. And I know everything's going to be okay. I know my kids can take care of themselves and can take care of the girls. And I know this. So it's just out of selfishness and malcontentment on my part um, because of having to adjust to a change. But I'm like, okay, you know what? If it was okay for Jesus, it's okay for you too. So... And Julie sent me this beautiful card and made me feel better about it. So um, thank y'all for your grace. And thank you, Julie and Teresa and all y'all who've sent messages and cards and um, DM'd me and emailed me. I, I appreciate it. And I am, I'm going to make it. It's just a big adjustment and it's hard or it's hard for me. Shares from last week. Did we do all the, yes, well, that's all the talks. Shares from last week. Um, okay. We have, and I just used a random comment picker. Somebody asked me what I use. I use, I think it's pickawinner.co or something. This is by M Designs, Nine Lives Patch. It goes to Carol Fawcett. Carol Fawcett. If you'll email me at niecylynn at yahoo.com. Um, this one is, where is the snow lady? This is a Snowkin Nanny. It goes to Bonnie Sheffer. Bonnie Sheffer. This one is romance was the keyword. It is summer house stitches and it's called symphonic romance and it is beautiful. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. And it says that that color floss is Gloriana. Topiary. This right here is Gloriana Topiary. It is beautiful. And this one goes to Nancy Malcolm. Um, chocolate. This one goes to Stuck in the Middle of Cross Stitch, who is Clara in the Netherlands. So, Clara, if you will email me, Nisi Lynn at Yahoo, I will get this on its way to you. It's She is Stuck in the Middle of Cross Stitch. And then this is Alphabet. It's a Diane Gramner design, and it is Amish alphabet, and it is so cute. 
The name of it is Amish Alphabet, and it is Joanne Pacheco. Joanne Pacheco, if you'll holler at me. And the only other one I didn't hear back from is Ann Shaw. And you may have emailed me in the last couple of days and I missed it, I'll double check. But Ann Shaw from last week, if you'll email me. Nisi Lynn at Yahoo, I will get those in the mail. And then this week we have, this is Tokens from Hold Me In My Heart. And it is by Charland Designs. Let's just use the word heart for this one. And it is gorgeous. It is so pretty. So I don't, it's stitched on 25 count with some pearl cotton and all the, the rest are DMCs. But it's just 63 by 97. So it's just like five by seven and a half. But that sure is pretty. So if you're interested in this one, it's called Tokens from the Heart, Charland Designs, Hold Me in the Heart. It's the first one. Use the word heart if you're interested in this one. This is my mom pillow. by Julia Punti Antici. I probably butchered your name and I'm so sorry, but GPA. And this one is my mom pillow. And this one is adorable. Use the word mom right there, mom. But look at that with that little willow tree. It looks like maybe, um, the willow tree may be It may be a chain stitch, but I'm not sure. But it is adorable. So cute. Use the word mom if you're interested in that one. This one is the word um, Angels of the Holy Night. And it is by, by the Bay Needle Art. Use the word angel. This is so pretty. And it has several designs in here, it looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like six. So it has six designs in here. And it is by the Bay Needle Art, Angels of the Holy Night. So use the word angel if you're interested in this one. Uh, this is Lizzie Kate, 100 Years. Um, I can't even look at this one without crying hardly. So, use the word years. Years. Um, it is beautiful and I can't read it because I'll start bawling. So, I'll hold it up here for a minute and you can read it. And then this one, because I want somebody to stitch this, and this is the Cross Stitch June 2022, last year, and it has a Praiseworthy Stitches little strawberry in here, and it is so cute. So that's what's in here, and so this magazine will go to somebody, just use the word, um, use the word strawberry. Tell me if you've ever made one of those little strawberries or not. I've never made one of those little strawberries. So let me know if you've ever made those before. And so I, um, ever, and is that everybody? I think that's everything. So um, I am going to get this uploaded so I can uh, pick up the girls and we can get to getting this afternoon. So y'all have a happy Friday and a great weekend and enjoy your stitches. Bye.